Hi everyone, it's Shem. Um, here's a short video of how to install um, brake and clutch levers onto the Honda CRF 250L. I've recently been out with, with my buddy and uh, well, we had a bit of an accident on his bike and uh, his clutch uh, lever was subsequently snapped. So uh, luckily he had two spare ones with him and we replaced it and it wasn't an issue. So I thought that for my bike, it would be a good idea if I had a set of spare brake and clutch levers, despite, despite having bark busters, I still think there might be a, a, a situation where if I drop the bike or if I crash into something and my still brake, if it goes in a funny angle and lifts the bark buster up or something like this. So uh, better to be safe than sorry. I thought it would be a good idea to get a spare set of um, brake and clutch levers. But instead of going for the same ones, I thought it might be nice to get some Zeta ones. And those are foldable, so uh, they kind of pivot outwards if you drop the bike. Apparently, it's really hard to break them, but, uh, you know, it's not really folding backwards that I'm worried about. It's kind of hitting them in an angle when it tries to lift it up or something like this. So I don't think that's gonna help with that. However, the reason why I went for this and paid extra money, I think they're about 70 pounds in the UK, uh, which is, uh, well, quite a lot more expensive than the uh, original uh, set of original levers, but they've got a adjust adjustable mechanism here so I can uh, change how far the actual lever is from, from the handlebars, which means that um, I can set them up so it's a lot more convenient to do like one or two fingers uh, breaking or, or pressing close. So that's the idea. Uh, yeah, so let, let's start the assembly procedure. Okay, so we're gonna start with unpacking the uh, Zeta levers just to have a look at the um, instruction manual, uh, installation manual, see so what's in it. It seems to be quite clear step-by-step -step guide, so you shouldn't have any issues with that. And uh, the first point on it asks to assemble the push rod onto the brake lever. Uh, however, mine came already assembled, so I'm just gonna tighten it and uh, make sure it's uh, fairly secure there. And I have to say, looking at the quality of machining on these levers, they're looking pretty impressive. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of CNC gone into it to produce that part. So yeah, they, they feel really nice. Um, I'm gonna go back to the bike and start the assembly procedure, or rather disassembly. I'm gonna start with removing the rubber protectors. I've already done it on this side. Uh, and then sliding that back backwards and then removing the clutch cable and then disassembling the bolts on both sides. So I'm gonna proceed with that now. Couple of points that I would like to make with regards to removal of these bolts as well as the clutch cable removal. If you've never done it before, you have to screw that in all the way that will give you enough slug in the cable in order for you to be able to pull it out without having to touch anything else if you don't have an enough slug there you might need to look further down the chain in order to give yourself more slack or near where the clutch is mounted however in my case this gave me enough slack to just pull the sleeving out and run the cable uh, when you do that make sure that the groove uh, on the nut and and this part together with the lever and the mounting of the lever they are aligned this will allow you to slide the actual cable through and then bend the lever slightly and remove it through the through another uh, perpendicular groove that runs uh, underneath the underneath the lever so it's fairly intuitive fairly straightforward just make sure you have a good look before you uh, attempt it mm. With regards to bolts, uh, let's just go to the other side. It might be a, uh, might be able to explain it better here. So the bolt in here, uh, obviously you've got a bolt at the top and uh, not at the bottom. And uh, this, they are both uh, spanner size number 10. Uh, so fairly common. I think uh, you should have that spanner in the, in the 
uh, tool set that came with the bike. Um, but, but the point I was trying to make is that it's a typical mounting style where you don't need two spanners uh, in order to remove that because the bolt at the top is actually threaded into the uh, lever mounting and then you've got another nut at the bottom uh, that secures it further so in order to remove the bolt at the top don't just start at it with the spanner first remove that nut this this will allow you to then un un unscrew the top bolt without any issues otherwise uh, you might be risking damaging the thread if, if the nut uh, locks in the wrong place and doesn't allow the uh, thing to turn properly in line with the threads in the actual lever so just remember that uh, we're removing the nut first and then we're removing the uh, bolt at the top okay we have both levers now removed um, as you can see this is what i meant about the bolts uh, they thread in into the uh, actual lever mounts and then they are counter locked with a nut at the bottom that's why you need to remove the nut first um, anyway looking at the levers strangely the uh, brake levers seem to be the same length however the lever for the clutch seems to be slightly shorter which is a bit weird i was expecting both levers to be shorter in order to kind of accommodate uh, three or two finger handling better but it seems like only clutch lever is shorter so i'm not quite sure what's going on with it but anyway i will proceed with the installation and, and we'll take it from there and um, i'm gonna clean them up although they are uh, they, they were looped by the factory not that long ago uh, I, I, i'm going to just clean them up and use some universal um universal grease uh, i mean it doesn't really matter uh, what type of grease is for this purpose in a sense it doesn't have to be anything fancy uh, with a high melting point it's just something with a good water resistance uh, and kind of anti-oxidization properties uh, would be handy so i'm just gonna use i think it's lithium based grease um, and yeah begin the assembly process Okay, so we now have both levers uh, in place. Um, I've already put the clutch wire in um, and preloaded it. Uh, so now I'm going to tighten the bolts to the appropriate torque. Bear in mind, these don't have to be very tight because you don't want it to clamp uh, the actual pivot. You want the lever to move freely. So I've checked the manual and I think uh, it states one newtonometer uh, for the bolts at the top. So very little torque. And then uh, the nut at the bottom, um, it's 5.9 newtonometers and I'm gonna put drop off lock type there just in case case um, so yeah I'm gonna proceed with uh, torquing it up now the pivot bolts have now been torqued up correctly uh, so I'm gonna proceed with putting the rubber protectors back uh, on here uh, before we do that we need to ensure that um, the free play on the clutch is appropriate uh, so uh, I think manual states about 20 millimeters and what I mean by it is if you measure the distance from the lever end to your handlebars it should move freely about 20 uh, between 10 to 20 millimeters uh, without actually uh, putting any tension on the clutch cable so uh, I've already set my up and I've, um, I'm just gonna have to torque it a little bit more uh, just to prevent it from moving and then I'm gonna put the uh, rubber cover back on One thing that I would like to point out at this stage is the distance of the levers from the bar booster or the side of the handlebars and um, because I'm uh, new to off-roading on the motorcycle most of my riding habits are from a road bike and I tend to press the clutch uh, lever and and often the brake lever with all of the fingers this is not ideal for off-road riding because you don't then get the full control over the bike and uh, you cannot grip the handlebar properly if you if you let go of all of the fingers so ideally i would like to learn some good habits and and actually start pressing the clutch clutch lever and brakes with either one finger or two uh, 
with the original levers in place I found that a little problematic because of the length of them so when I've been pressing it with a finger on two my lever was stopping on the other fingers uh, that I was using to grab the handlebars so it was like trying to uh, almost squash them against the handlebars and that wasn't ideal so I attempted to rectify it by moving both Mm, assemblies of uh, well the mirror together with the clutch lever towards the middle of the bike and same for the uh, same for the brake and that gave me more room on this side so I could actually still have a pretty good leverage uh, and just press it with one on two fingers this wasn't as much of an issue on the brake side however because of that uh, switch assembly in here this become a bit of an issue on, on, on the clutch side so when you look at it when I press it too close it actually touches the plastic assembly and this is why there is that groove in here in order to accommodate the shape of that assembly so um there are two uh two ways around it really uh, if I want to continue with the position of the of the clutch level like this, I would have to put a bit more tension on the on the actual clutch um, wire to get rid of that free play, and that means that by the time clutch gets to this position, it, it, it's fully disengaged. Um, so I've been doing that with previous handle uh, with with previous levers, and that was that was fine. Um, another way of doing it would be to move that plastic assembly together with that mount and move it towards the center of the bike. The problem with that is that the plastic assembly, the only thing that secures it in in place, it's like a plastic pin that goes into the handlebar. Um, so by moving it, first of all, I wouldn't be able to put it together. Uh, and secondly, I would have to drill another hole into the handlebar where that pin would go. Uh, I could do it, and I think this would be the neatest option to, to, to have it all in place. But kind of at the moment, I, I, I don't want to do that yet. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm just going to uh, stick with what I've got. And because the Zeta lever is actually slightly shorter than the original lever that came with the bike, I might move back uh, this assembly towards this side to make sure that the levers both break together with the closure are the same distance uh, from the bar booster mount. Okay, I have now moved the closure lever back to its original position and because of the shorter uh, clutch lever from Zeta, uh, I've still got a bit more room here uh, to accommodate sort of two or one finger braking and then um, I also have enough room for that plastic assembly so I can touch the handlebar and I don't have to get rid of the um, free play over here but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have to ride with it and see how I feel about it anyway so um, just so you've got some numbers here I've got about 45 millimeters uh, between the end of the lever and the bark booster and that's in in, in, in in its closest position to the bark booster so it's slightly different on the brake side um, but but on the clutch side the closest position is around here so that's 45 mil uh, from the inside to the inside. Uh, on the brake side, uh, I've actually managed to move it uh, even further. Uh, I butchered it a little bit, but I, I can touch it up with a bit of a paint. Uh, but that means that the brake in its closest position to the bark booster, which is which is about here, I would say, it's 45 millimeters as well. So when I sit on the bike and actually place my, ha place my hands on the handlebars, uh, the levers feel uh, pretty even so i can do it with like two or one finger so i'm gonna give that a go uh, and see how it feels during riding i'm also i might also play with the adjuster here on the zeta levers to see how close i would like the lever to be to the handlebars um it depends on how long your fingers are you might want to have it further or closer uh, it's, it's purely a preference so i'm gonna leave it as it came from the factory and then maybe uh, play uh, play with it after few rides or so.
one thing that I've forgotten to mention are the torque setting for moving this. So manual states in 9.8 newton meters. So w w when you're moving this, uh, you have to make sure you start with the top clamp. I mean, try to do them evenly to start with. And then w once you start feeling tension, do the top one first. So it closes up the top and then do the bottom. Um, so yeah, that, that that's pretty much it for the levers. Uh, hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions, just write them down in the comment sections below and I'll try to answer um, as soon as I can. All the best.